A day earlier than expected, my loop deck has arrived, so I'm going to do an unboxing and have a quick comparison between it and the stream deck. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alex. So in this video, I'm just going to be doing an unboxing of the Loop Deck. Now, I don't normally do unboxings. I usually just rip things straight out of the boxes and uh, and get to work with them. But for this one, I did just want to have a look at how it looks coming out of the box because I've had a lot of preconceived uh, ideas about this before actually receiving it. Uh, people who are regular viewers of my channel will know what a fan of the Stream Deck I am. Uh, and so I'm really curious to see how this one ends up fitting into my uh, workflow uh, and, and how it can compares to the Stream Deck because it's quite a lot to live up to in my opinion. I do like the build quality of the Stream Deck and uh, it's just all around a, <laughs> a good device that is the core of my sort of general workflow in everything really not just in making these videos but also it's sort of filtered through into everything else I do on the Mac as well. So uh, yeah I am just going to do an unboxing. I'm not going to go through the whole setup at this point. I'm just literally going to do a comparison between it and my first impressions of uh, getting the device in my hands basically so uh, let's get straight on into it shall we and <laughs> finally putting my top-down camera to some use so uh, I haven't done anything with this except just slip this little uh, tape at the bottom so we open that up we've got a uh, another box inside just take that out this is where I'm going to drop it isn't it it's uh, obvious it's inevitable really if I'm doing anything as an unboxing for the first time I'm bound to uh, just drop it on the floor or something uh, nice shiny writing on the box and then let's lift it up i tell you what apple has really done something there we go first uh, first bump apple has really done something for the uh, the world of electronics packaging because everything now has this thing where you just lift it up and it just goes as the box sort of falls out from it so uh, everyone's paying a lot more attention to uh, packaging now since uh, since apple sort of stepped up the game uh, anyway so this is what we've got in the box we have got a quick user guide which i will come to later uh, there's not much to it actually so just a few pages and then we've got this one which is warranty and safety information uh, i hope this can't hurt me do i need to read that before i go on or shall i just uh, shall I just be brave I'll, I'll be brave i'll leave the safety information i hope there's no explosives in here uh, and then how do we get this out uh, ah i see just like that <laughs> pull up from the side and We've got the actual loop deck itself. It's actually a little bit smaller than I was expecting, and it is definitely a little bit lighter. So this is the loop deck live, I should say, by the way. Uh, and then I've got my Stream Deck XL on the uh, table. So let me just pop that one off the stand. Uh, you can see the size of it by comparison. Um, there you go. It's uh, sort of, uh, yeah, goes to uh, about the, uh, the last row of buttons and um, from the top to say the bottom row of buttons so that's how small it is it's actually quite a bit thinner as well definitely not as uh, weighty as a device so uh, you can see there the uh, the sort of size of it it's pretty uniform all the way along whereas the uh, stream deck has obviously got this sort of tapered uh, shape to it uh, and then not to mention obviously the whoops don't want to press my stream deck by accident do we <laughs> there we go I'll go back to that little uh, whoops daisy that's the wrong one I have to be careful about this. So obviously we've already got the uh, the stand on the Stream Deck as well, so it does stand up like that. Whereas the Loop Deck has uh, got it's got a built-in stand. I think it's got another little stand that comes with it. Let's uh, let's press on, shall we, and find out. Uh, I didn't mean to uh, press that stinger, I promise. But while it's there, uh, if you did like this video so far, then give it a like and subscribe, uh, and consider supporting the channel as well. Now, what else have we got in the box? Uh, it's a bit uh, a bit of a dark box, isn't it, really? Uh, black on black but if I open that up now then uh, we've got a cable and it is ah, it is a USB-C to plug into the computer uh, USB-C to plug into the uh, the loop deck and then also there is this handy little dongle to convert from a USB 3 to a USB C as well uh, and what else have we got in here we've also got the stand uh the stand feels a little bit flimsy actually it's a little bit sort of uh yeah it does feel a little bit flimsy a little bit plasticky uh, and that looks like it just fits into these little screw holes in fact let me take the uh the protective plastic off first of all peel that off there and ah well this is interesting because this is basically one of the uh one of the things that i um I was thinking about this, if I just take off this plastic, take it off from this side, take this off all the way around. 
I can immediately see that one of my complaints that I had, not complaints, but one of my worries, I should say, that I had about it before getting it, is probably a little bit unfounded, actually, which is quite pleasing. So let me have a look at this. So in the bottom, we've got these screw holes. This has got some little uh, little holes in the bottom or little sort of studs, if you like. Uh, and that just plugs in there and then snaps on it like that. It does feel a bit flimsy, this does to me. It doesn't feel quite as sturdy as the um, as the Stream Deck, this uh, this one on the back. Um, however, it does feel quite solid, actually, now that it's on there saying that. So um, perhaps it is all right after all. But... I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong about something. And I'll tell you what I was wrong about. Although these are uh, touch screens, so they're not physical buttons in the same way that they are on the Stream Deck, they have got ridges. It's not just like a solid piece of glass that goes all the way across it. So you can see that there are uh, definite indentations there. Let me see if I can just brighten this color a little bit. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I'll just try and brighten this because uh, I feel like it's a little bit dark. Am I bright? I'm doing the wrong one now. One second. I'll just bring that up a little bit, so hopefully you can see that bit better. Don't want to wipe, uh, wash it out too much, but yeah. So there are these uh, sort of ridges between these buttons, but they, they aren't sort of push buttons as such. So they're not push buttons in the same way that they are on the Stream Deck, where there's a distinct sort of clunk to them when you push them in. Uh, however, there is definite, there's ridges between them. So you would actually, because uh, my thing with the, the Stream Deck is always that I can just put my hand on it and I know, you know, if I put my hand here, which is where my hand sort of naturally rests, then I know that this button here is to end the live stream. Uh, this button here is to go to my main scene. Uh, this one is to go into live demo mode and this one is to uh, hold down the control to zoom in and things like that. So I just know instinctively where all the buttons are. So I tend to just sort of have my hand on the Stream Deck like that. Uh, and then I can just control everything from there um, or come over to the other side and I kind of know where I'm going from uh, from that side as well. So that was one of the worries that I had about the loop deck because of these uh, this just being a single flat screen. But actually, it's not at all. It's got these little ridges and that would mean that actually you can feel where the uh, the knobs are obviously on it. Uh, and so you would be able to come down and uh, and sort of reach across and know kind of where you were because of that. Interesting. The dials uh, feel really solid. They are push push button as well, so you can uh, sort of push them in. And I've got a little satisfying click to them. Uh, and they also, I don't know if you can hear this. <laughs> They've got like little ratchets in them as well. So you can actually turn them by uh, sort of incrementally by, um, uh, well, increments funnily enough <laughs> uh, and they've got quite a nice uh, nice feel to them and these buttons at the bottom as well uh, feel good as well so I'm already quite impressed actually it's uh, yeah I was thinking that this was just going to come as a single glass screen and then I would uh, be feeling like it was um, going to be too difficult to find what I was looking for and too difficult to find the buttons that I wanted and I would be pressing the wrong things but I actually just don't think you would press the wrong things uh, there is swiping on it as well uh, and so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that uh, that works out as well. Let's just plug this in. Uh, cable is a little bit on the short side. Uh, that is actually, it is really short. <laughs> that is how long is that? Let me get my trust, trusty tape measure. That is. It's a daisy. It is about a meter long. So what's that? Uh, 38, 39 inches. That's quite short, really, to be honest. I mean, the Stream Deck comes with a really long, uh, long cable. Uh, and if you've got your computer, if your computer isn't on your desk, so for example, my, uh, my Mini is, uh, it's actually on a, a shelf underneath the desk. So all of my cables sort of route across the desk and then uh, go down through a little hole and then to the Mac Mini. So this already, if I'm going to have the Loop Deck here, I can tell you now, that will only just literally just reach the edge of the desk where it's got to go. So what I am going to have to do is I'm going to have to pause this and I'm going to have to source a longer cable. Fortunately, the Stream Deck... Um, uh, I was going to say the Stream Deck comes with two, but it doesn't, does it? Bear with me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm back, but I haven't plugged my headphones back in. So it sounds a bit funny. There we go. <laughs> I can hear what's going on now. I don't have a long cable, so I will have to go and get one. However, uh, what I forgot was, and this isn't the ideal way to set this up, 
but I do still have an old school keyboard <laughs> and the old school Mac keyboards have got USB plugs in the side of them. So yeah, definitely want to be plugging this directly into the uh, the Mac mini rather than uh, over a uh, an old, probably USB 2, USB 1, I'm not sure, um, keyboard connection. Uh, so yeah, definitely not the best way to connect it. But nevertheless, for the time being, for me to just try it out, then uh, this will work. There is two ends on this um cable by the way one of them is like a, a 90 degree turn and i see in all the pictures and people using it that that is the one that you have on there uh, i'm not sure whether i'll have it go out that way uh, i know some people complained about the cable positioning uh, and i'm inclined to agree really i suppose it's just the thinness of the thing it would be difficult like with the stream deck you've got plenty of space underneath to plug it in whereas here they're trying to keep the thing thin uh, and so that's why it's going out from the uh, from the back there um so yeah <laughs> I'm not that fussed about it, to be honest. But what I'll do is I'll just plug this into the uh, port on the side of my keyboard until I go and get a longer cable. I'll just bring it out from the front. Uh, and then this is plenty long enough. <laughs> but we definitely need a longer cable. So I'm just going to plug that straight in and let's see what happens. I have actually installed the software. I installed that the day that I ordered it, in fact, <laughs> to be a little bit prepared. But when you first do switch it on, you get these little, uh, it almost looks like Pac-Man, doesn't it? little loop deck icons and uh, what I probably need to do is actually open the software on the computer that might help might it <laughs> so let me go ahead and uh, do that uh, open it like this and then this should pop up up in the menu bar uh, something is springing to life let's have a little look where's it gone Now, that is, uh, what that's done is, because I've already installed my Ecamm Live. I'm not going to set up Ecamm Live on here today. I am going to do that as a completely separate video. Uh, this is more just for, um, specifically, just having a little look and seeing how it works and seeing how we get it set up. We've just got a few other things opened up here. How rude of them. Uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. Don't, definitely don't want you open. <laughs> So I'll open up the uh, Loop Deck interface. It is just uploading, uh, or rather opening, I should say. And it's telling me uh, that what I need to do is, first of all, first things first, update the Loop Deck firmware. So uh, let me just pause this and I'll get that done. In fact, while we're doing it, let's just have a little look at the process, shall we? It's just updating, it's disconnecting the device and then we've got a few little uh, blinking buttons flashing on it as it just reboots everything. Do not disconnect device. And I didn't really pause for very long, so this is how long it takes to update the firmware. Device disconnected, device connected, and we are done. There we go, so that was pretty quick. And it comes into this screen, so let me come back to the top down, shall I? We've now got a... Uh, uh, screen here that's open and it's already populated with some actions so we've got uh, google chrome uh, lots of google stuff in here actually google mail uh, <laughs> and then we've got uh, whatsapp and twitter as well so if i press any one of those uh, then now there's something that i just wasn't expecting <laughs> I didn't realize that there was like haptic feedback on these buttons so there's a bit of a uh, sort of vibration to it so when you uh, press on any one of these buttons, and there we go, that's just opened up Twitter. Uh, and if I press this one, let me see if you can hear this. If I press these buttons. There you go. <laughs> so there is a bit of a, uh, a uh, vibration to it to let you know that you have actually hit something or activated something. Now, the big question is uh, how about the... <clears throat> we've got multiple screens here. How does the uh, the swipe work? So I know some people have mentioned about that um so we've basically got here they've seems like they've created three screens for us so we've got these three buttons that are illuminated uh one two three the four five six seven are just uh, off at the moment no light on them so if i press two then you can see it's basically moving to another page of apps so uh, or sorry actions i should say so that is the way that those work but you can also swipe between them using your finger apparently so let me just try that again you get the haptic feedback and you can swipe either the whole length, you can swipe a little bit, or on one of the buttons perhaps. If you swipe on one of the buttons, it just actually activates the button. So that might be it. But if you just swipe across all of them, and how slowly can we go? Let's try. Uh, that's a bit too slow. 
that's okay. And then let's try really quick. That seems pretty good to me. Obviously, uh, limited testing. <laughs> but I know some people were asking about whether the um, whether there'd be any issue of accidentally touching the buttons as you're swiping through them. But I mean, that's pretty. It's just you can hear the uh, the motors whirring as I'm doing that as I'm swiping. So that's swiping backwards and forwards on it. Uh, now you've also got these controls on the uh, or these little uh, screens, if you like, down the side and down this side as well. And those tell you what the uh, the dials actually do. Uh, so we've got a few of those put in already. So we've got web scroll. Let's get a website up, shall we? And just give that a little test. Uh, in fact, let me just open Safari, see if it just does it automatically in whichever browser you're in. Go to a page. And that is for scrolling up and down. I'd never use that, to be honest. I'd never scroll a website with that as opposed to my mouse, but it's just interesting to, to see how it feels. Uh, this one is uh, volume at the top. So that is, uh, I'm liking this already, to be honest. I like the fact that you've got this sort of tactile feel to them as well. And in fact, you can't see this, but if you imagine the, uh, the volume uh, slider on the Mac that you normally operate with the keys, and then each one of the little uh, turns of the loop deck represents one little uh, increment of the uh, the volume. So uh, that's really nice, actually. Um, yeah, let me have a look at what else we've got on here. So we've got a little clock showing up at the top here. So these are just the default things. I've not gone in and changed anything at all with these. We've got the little clock, the little date, uh, link to loop deck on YouTube and the loop deck knowledge base. Uh, we've got that one there, system preferences, and indeed it brings up system preferences. Let's have a little look. What do these do? Don't do anything in there at the moment. Media track, and we've got brightness as well, brightness control, and then that is another. Uh, I think that that looks like actually Spotify. I think that is perhaps a separate volume knob for Spotify because Spotify is on there as well. Uh, I shouldn't probably be just opening all of these things up, should I, while I'm making a recording, but never mind. It's all in the interest of uh, experimentation. <laughs> so that is opening up Spotify. And let me just check if that is indeed changing the Spotify volume. Uh, I'm not sure that it is actually. Let's have a little look. No, I should probably just figure out what these are before uh, just trying to twiddle them all, shouldn't I? Let's see what else we've got on these uh, dials, though. Uh, that looks like uh, there is a so there is a sort of calculator built into it. I'm not sure where that actually operates though. Um, we'd have to open the calculator, I suppose, and then these would be the um, the controls for that. So uh, let's have a little look at the software then. Uh, I wasn't going to do a full sort of um, uh, setup and everything like that of the software because what I plan to do is actually rather than just give you the painful experience of sitting here as I go through everything. Incidentally, my sort of method for uh, learning apps uh, is basically just go through and try everything. <laughs> that, that, that's that's it. There's no secret to it. Uh, whenever I get a new app or anything, first of all, go to the menus, go down through every single menu command, find out what all those things do, open up the preferences, go through every single page of the preferences, read every single preference. That's all there is to it. <laughs> that, that, that's all there is to it. Do that again a couple of times and then you've got a, a, quite a, familiar, a familiarity with the app. So uh, that is what I'm going to do with this one. And then uh, I'll be coming and doing some more videos in this uh, and uh, probably trying to give the impression like I've been using it for ages. But you will all know this, this secret, won't you? You'll know the secret that I've literally just got this today. So if tomorrow I'm making a video all about the interface and everything like that, uh, it's a day old. <laughs> Secrets out. Um, so yeah, this is basically where you go and program it. Like I say, I've just not dug, dug into this at all. Uh, my instant reaction to it, though... Um, is it's a little bit more complicated than the Stream Deck. Not that there is, you know, Stream Deck's pretty basic, really, in terms of the interface, isn't it? In fact, let's have a look at this. This is the Stream Deck interface. So here you've just got uh, the actions. You click on the action you want, and then you've got a, or if you've got an empty space, you can just come over here and grab an action and drag it and drop it, and then you can set what you want the action. So let's just see out of the box how intuitive this software actually is. Um, not that I'm, but the sort of benchmark or anything like that. But um, let's let's go to here. So if I want to create another screen, I'm going to press on the four button on my uh, my loop deck because uh, I would think that that would add another page, uh, but it doesn't. Okay, so I'll click on it on here. That doesn't add another page. How about that one? Click on the little dots. Uh, add new page. There we go. So 
Should we just figure this out? Should we just have a little go through and figure out as we go along? <laughs> uh, and then when I come and do my ones about all my setup, I'll be a little bit better prepared. So um, if you don't want to watch the painful experience of me figuring this out, um, then thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, you need not watch no further. <laughs> but if you want to stick around and watch me try and figure this out, then uh, uh, be my guest. You're more than welcome. So... <laughs> We've got these little three dots here that are next to the one, two, three. I haven't, I haven't read any instructions for this, by the way, either. So uh, let's just see if it is really that intuitive. Because Stream Deck is just really intuitive in my mind. So the three dots there is to add another page. So let's try and add another page. Uh, there we go. Simple as that. And we've also got these two pages for the, uh, the, these, uh, the buttons. So these, sorry, for the dials. So these ones control the dials. It looks like the left hand side and the right hand side are totally linked so you've basically got sort of you can't change what the dials do independently on both sides if you see what I mean so if you've got this page one of the uh, the dials then you're going to have this one this volume brightness and whatever that is play pause controls and these three together and if you go to page two all six of these change so you can't sort of flick those two independently uh, which probably would be quite nice, actually, if you could. So uh, there's my first feature request. Let me uh, make a note of that. <laughs> Having not even used it, that is a feature request. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to just add another one on there because what I don't want to do is just go and start messing around with what was already there. So I'll add another page. I wonder how many pages you can add. Uh, should we find out? Let's just go and have a little look. Well, I, th I suppose there's a bit of a giveaway here, isn't there? Uh, we've got the numbers one to seven. So I'm guessing you can add seven. Let's just go and just double check that. It would be a bit silly if you could add more than seven if you've got seven hardwired buttons, but you never know. Oh, well, there you go, you can. Well, now, so what do you do with that? So you've got seven hardwired buttons, but you can actually swipe to number eight. It's almost like a secret page, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> let's see how many you can add in. Surely not more than ten. <laughs> There we go. We've reached the limit and the limit is 14. It probably says all this in the instructions, doesn't it? But uh, it's sometimes fun to explore and find out. So we've got 14 pages there. And now there's one question outstanding, isn't there? <laughs> How many vertical pages can we add in? Let's have a little look, shall we? I hope this is riveting viewing. I did give you the option of bailing, didn't I? I gave it, so we've got 10 pages there. Well, that's a little bit more intuitive, isn't it? Nice uh, round decimal number. So we've got 10 potential uh, sets of functions for this. And then we've also got that, that. I'll tell you what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to get a calculator out because just very quickly, um, I should be able to do this in my head, but where is it? It's basically 14 times, how many have we got there? Four, that's 14 times 12 plus 60, uh, 228 button pushes and then we've got 60 dials that we can use so it's quite a lot of functions there isn't there uh and with the stream deck well the stream deck's a bit different because we've got all the different profiles as well so i'm not sure this is this is pages and i guess in this is just actually on a profile so uh interesting the journey continues so let's have a little look at how i actually set up some of these now i wonder if i can flick to that yet i can't use those buttons just yet in fact, I'm wondering now if these aren't actually programmed to go to a specific page until you actually, ah, it is indeed, you have to, you have to actually assign those to a particular page. So what I could do is I've clicked on that little button there and then add button action. So what button action could I have? Let's have a little look. We've got um, desktop actions. So we're here, we've got some different groupings of actions. We've got the OS. We've got navigation, uh, custom, Spotify, and now that's interesting. Where did, we did have an Ecamm Live in here a minute ago. Hmm, interesting. Let's have a little look in here. Ah, there it is, Ecamm Live. Uh, I see, so that is basically, that is the profile. So we've just switched profile there. Let me get back to uh, 
let's get back to the main one. So that is the profile that's already built in for that. Then if I go to Photoshop, let's have a look at that. Well, that's interesting. It's basically already set up. That is really interesting. So that's something different than uh, Stream Deck. With Stream Deck, although you can get plugins for different things, uh, there isn't actually Photoshop plugins for it. You can get some Photoshop icons and things like that, uh, but they're not there by default, and they certainly aren't just ready set up like that. That is uh, that is really interesting. So this is the Photoshop page. Uh, let's have a little look at what we've got in there. Well, that's a bit of a time saver, isn't it? That is a bit of a time saver indeed if they've got the things already there. Uh, let's have a little look at this one. I see. I'm liking this. <laughs> I'm like, my first impressions are, uh, having been a little bit worried that the um, uh, I wouldn't like the touch screen as much, um, I am just liking already. They've got Final Cut Pro actions in there as well. And it looks like there is... Uh, Let's have a little look. Got multiple different pages on that one as well. Or it looks like just one page on that one actually. But there are some assignments to these buttons as well. Set selection. Right, okay, so these buttons down at the bottom then, you can actually just apply those. I was thinking that those were for pages, but they're not. They're just actually buttons. And it just happened to be that on that first profile they were um uh they were just assigned to change the pages. So that was all that, that was going on there. But in actual fact, these buttons could be anything. So if you do want hard, wide, uh, sort of hard uh, tactile buttons, there is still seven of them. You just would have to remember what those were for each of the individual profiles that you were in. Um, and those are sort of going to then be common throughout all of the pages within that profile. So pages in here, I've got ridiculous 14 pages these buttons would stay the same no matter what page you're on but as soon as you actually change to a different profile then it would um those buttons will all update even the hard buttons at the bottom so the question is how would you change the um how would you change the uh, uh the profile i guess you could have those as hardwired buttons then perhaps or would that be a button on there? I guess we'll have to find out that as well, won't we? Let me just go to one of these blank pages again then. And I'll have a little look at the actions. So we've got the actions for the OS navigation. And so we've got things like activate. What's that? Activate different applications. Uh, clipboard. Lots of things related to clipboard. Date and time. So that's where you can add the clock. Things like that. Moon phase. Week num number. Uh, keyboard. So simulating keystrokes and stuff like that. Uh, obviously quite a lot of those. <laughs> Literally simulating all the keystrokes of the keyboard. And what else we've got? Keyboard modifiers, media. Uh, my instant thought of this is that there is a hell of a lot more actual actions built into this, um, potentially, than there is with the Stream Deck in some ways. Uh, although I tend to use Stream Deck pretty heavily with Keyboard Maestro in any case, so that's not quite such an issue. But uh, there's all sorts of different things here. So basically like simulating a mouse drag and stuff like that, holding down the left key, a mouse drag holding down the middle key and things like that. So uh, that's quite interesting. In fact, these ones look to me... Uh, I see. So these ones here, they're actually... Um, the rotating symbol there is a site so they can be assigned to these... Um, uh, these uh, these dials then uh, and that was indeed Spotify volume and then brightness and then the so you've got the two things that you can assign to them for either the rotation or for the uh, the action when you press it uh, and then if you look in the menus at the side uh, we've got some of these that are press actions and some of them that are rotation actions as well um, it's quite interesting though that is to be honest some are, like some of these having these actions where it's a combination of uh, like a mouse movement with the dial very interesting my mind's at whirring at the moment thinking about the possibilities now with this <laughs> uh, so we've got some system stuff brightness uh, open the finder go to the previous app command tab it's just uh, that one I suppose it's different to command tab because command tab brings up the uh, the app switcher but this is actually just switching to the previous one 
widgets. Uh, what are widgets? Beats per minute, bell, and a stopwatch. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not sure I'll be using those ones. And let's have a look at this one. Navigation, workspaces, uh, touch pages. Okay, so there we go. So these are basically, we can have a button to switch between to different pages. So um, that's how we go to different pages. Presumably there'll be one here for... Um, yeah, dial pages, so you can actually assign a click to change to the different page as well. Got you. Uh, or next or previous. So you could, if you would uh, if you wanted to assign, uh, assign buttons to these, you could just assign a button to it for like next and previous. But in actual fact, uh, you can just swipe on them as well to move between them. So uh, that is that one. What have we got in here? Custom, app and action shortcuts. Uh, so some apps in there. YouTube. Uh, I wonder what the integration is with uh, with Google on this because it's pretty Google heavy. This is, isn't it? Uh, Chrome, Google Drive, uh, Gmail, uh, WhatsApp, YouTube. <laughs> uh, a lot of uh, Google stuff going on there, isn't it? Uh, app actions, calculator, emoji, launchpad, lock screen, loop deck, maximize, and calculator. Uh, I'm still not sure entirely where that's going to work or if it just is on the actual calculator itself. Um, media, media, control and system. Let's have a look what's in system. Web scroll and then here we've got one that's specifically all Spotify, all that sort of stuff. And then basically we've got these uh, ones for other apps as well. So we can, um, and just incidentally, just to actually apply these things. So let's say I was going to have a look at something to do with the um, uh, the volume, shall I, or something like that. Let's have a little look. So if I wanted to, um, uh, let's say just open Chrome, it's just as simple as click on the button and then add the action. Uh, so Chrome, let's just see, do I just drag that? I say it's as simple as that. You see, I'm already trying to sound like I know what I'm doing, but there you go. So it is, you just drag that over and stick it wherever you want. Just put it right there on top. You've got some little drop downs that you can rename it, cut and copy, and uh, presumably paste once you've copied it. Uh, so you can move these actions into other places. Uh, this Is this a filter? So if I click that, it will just show me only the rotation ones. Got it. So uh, yeah, and then we've got a little search here, and then we can just filter by the, uh, the different type up there. Uh, and then you've also got this thing to manage plugins, which ones are showing up in this particular setup. So if I was to toggle that one on, then uh, then that would pop up in this list of uh, of plugins for this uh, this sort of profile as well. Then you've got workspaces, which are um, workspaces, as I recall from the one video that I did watch about it, are basically a set of. Um, in fact, that is actually that's that's more like I think you would think of profiles on a stream deck. I think. Um, because workspaces is kind of like a setup of a specific uh, set of uh, the rotation, the, the like the knobs, actions, and the uh, the uh, the buttons. Um, so it's you just build a combination of the touch pages and the dial pages. So you could still be in one profile, but then you could have. Um, multiple different workspaces. So for example, for my Ecamm Live, I'm thinking the different use cases that I have for it, then I could perhaps have a uh, an Ecamm Live profile and then a different workspace for the different use cases I have for it, something like that. Um, that's what I think that is. Yeah, I could, uh, I could actually just stay and play with this uh, for some considerable hours. In fact, do you know what? I probably will. However, I uh, I won't make you sit through all of that. <laughs> I'll just uh, get to the bottom of it and report back. Um, but yeah, initial impressions though are uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm uh, surprised by how uh, how compact and light it is. Actually, it is uh, smaller than I was expecting. My sort of worries about, uh, not worries really, were they? They were my mild concerns, let's say, about the uh, the touchscreen has been sort of alleviated really because of the, uh, it, it does have some tactility to it because you can feel where the buttons are. So uh, you would know, for example, if you were on 
you know, this up here and you can put your finger down there and you would know where the button is. I don't need to see if I do actually inadvertently uh, activate it at any point, but <clears throat> certainly for the time being, it looks, uh, uh, yeah, it's certainly better than I was anticipating. Um, not entirely sure about this stand. It feels a little bit flimsy, but then having said that, now that it's on there, it is pretty solid. It's not going to come off easily without me sort of, you know, forcing it. And also because it is so light, it's not like it's... Um, uh, it's going to, you know, collapse or anything. It's not a, not like a sort of kickstand. It does actually click firmly in place. Uh, and in fact, I'm just wondering now if I would use it like that, or if, in fact, with this one, I might even uh, let's be careful taking this off. Uh, I might even prefer to use this one down like that. I'm not sure yet. Um, or maybe mount them both together. <laughs> we'll have to see. But yeah, I'm certainly, yeah, I'm certainly impressed with it out of the uh, the box. A uh, bit disappointed about the cable length, though. I mean, come on, that. Uh, uh, I don't know if you how close you are to your computer, but not everybody's got their laptop right on the desk or a Mac Mini right on the desk in front of them, and it doesn't leave much room to sort of manoeuvre it around either. So, uh, you know, if the, uh, in fact, if the if, if even if I got the Mac Mini right in front of me on the uh, the desk here, um, then this cable would only barely just reach around the back to plug into the port if I was going to have this sort of next to me on the desk like this or over to one side. So, uh, yeah, cable length is a bit of a uh, bit of a letdown there but never mind <laughs> we can always change the cables can't we so uh, that is all for this uh, this video but uh, you know that there is going to be a whole series of loop deck videos coming up next and the next one I will do a sort of full uh, rundown of actually setting up the loop deck for various different things but I'm also going to be doing uh, I think a live stream about the uh, the loop deck with Ecamm Live. So keep your eyes out for that one as well. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I will leave a link to all my other loop deck videos as soon as they're finished over on the uh, right hand side. <laughs> so in the meantime, have a great day and I'm gonna get back to uh, playing with the loop deck. Bye bye for now. <laughs>